Hi everyone, Kyle here from Bostic Family Light Show. Today we're going to show you how we built our P5 panel and enclosure. I'm also going to show you how we set up the pocket scroller and our pocket beagle so we can get them configured in next slides. Here we go. So for this panel, we are going to do a 2x2 two two, and we are going to use this for a tomb 2 sign. So when you get the panels, you want to be careful and you want to pay attention to the direction these arrows are facing. And then what I did is just kind of line them up in the order I'm going to want them. Once they're in the layout, you can take the brackets that you have to put them together. Be careful of the recessed holes. You're going to want those to be facing up. So we have the two ends and then in our case, we just have the one mil. Um, set those in your place and then we can screw them in. Okay. So now that we have the panel all screwed and bolted together, lift it up, see that there are no gaps or anything like that. Everything looks good. So we can continue on to starting to wire this up. They have these ribbon cables. This is how we connect the P5 panels. And you want to be, you want to pay attention to the little notch on here. And then just make sure that that lines up with the notch in the connector. Each of these panels have an in and an output. So just look right here, it will tell you which connector you're connecting to. So in this case, this is the input, this is the output. So that way when you're connecting them, you'll have the consistent flow of data like you would in a normal pixel string. And then for the pocket scroller and pocket beagle, we have these pins that are sitting off the board along with the headers on the pocket beagle. And you're just gonna wanna line this up. You're gonna have the micro USB port facing the full size USB port. And then once the pins are nicely lined up, you're just gonna evenly apply pressure so it slides down and makes good contact with the pins and sits down as tight as it can on the board. And then ours came with this little screen. And the little screen attaches to these four pins right here. Same thing, just carefully line those up and just add a little bit of pressure. It should slide right in. Doesn't require very much pressure. And then to get this connected to the internet, you need a USB dongle. You can use USB to Wi-Fi or USB to Ethernet. And then from here, you'll want to connect power to it. There's this connector right here that accepts power input. So what we did with ours is we put the pocket beagle on the back and then I just drilled a small hole into the plastic and then used the screws that it came with to mount it. You want to be very careful if you're going into this plastic, if you crack it or go too far, you will damage the panel. So be very careful with that.
And then we have our power distro board. So we can put this pretty much wherever we want as well. Depending on your configuration, you could also buy a bracket to mount the power supply. The way we're going to do this, we want our power supply to not be mounted to this board. Now that we have the panel all put together, we're going to configure the pocket scroller and pocket beagle to work with FPP. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the GitHub page and download the latest version. If you are setting this up on a BeagleBone like we are, you're going to download the BBB image. If you're setting up a Raspberry Pi, go ahead and download the Pi image. After you have the image downloaded, you can open up SD card formatter. Make sure that you select your SD card and then click on format. Go ahead and say yes and then OK. And then from there, go ahead and open up Etcher and then locate that image file you just downloaded. From there, go ahead and select target. That is going to be the SD card. Go ahead and say continue and then click on flash. You're going to get a pop-up asking to confirm you want to do that. Go ahead and say yes. This part takes a few minutes, so I'll speed this part up and then we'll show you how to configure the software in FPP. Go ahead and take the SD card out of the adapter and plug it into the Pocket Beagle. Go ahead and connect the micro USB and USB cable to the computer in Pocket Beagle. Don't have the power supply connected at this time. And then if you're using Windows, Open up Google Chrome and go to the IP address 192.168.7.2. You should see a screen that looks like this. It is going to tell you that the SD card has unused space and go to storage settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then down here under SD card actions, click grow file system. Go ahead and say yes. It will say that it is done and you can click close. And then up here, go ahead and click on reboot and then okay. The reboot on a BeagleBone does take a little while. Once it comes back up, we can configure the last couple of settings and then we can start to test out the panel. All right, now that that has came back up, we can go over to status control and down to network. And then from here, we can assign a static IP address. Go ahead and put in an unused IP address. The subnet mask is usually 255.255.255.0. And then you can add your gateway or router IP address. Go ahead and select the network you want it to join and enter in the password. And then under host name, give it something unique so you'll remember what it is. And then for DNS, usually I will use the router IP address and then a public server like Google or Cloudflare. Go ahead and say update DNS and update interface. And then you'll have to do another reboot Go ahead and say okay. Once this comes back up, it should show you your new interface settings. And then from here, go ahead and click on input and output. Go over to channel output. Click on LED panels. Enable LED panel output. And then you can define how many panels you're using. We have two wide and two high. We're using P5 panels. Those are 64 by 32 with 1 16th scan. Our panels are RGB. 
and then I change the color depth to 12 bit. I recommend having output by row turned on. And then over here, this is defining the order the panels are configured. This is the front view, so the back view would be reversed, but O is output. So output one, output one, panel one. In our case, this is panel two. And then this is going to be output two, output two, still panel one, and then panel two. Go ahead and click save. And then you can restart FPPD. Doing this restart is a lot faster than doing the full reboot. Depending on the configuration change you make, it will require either a restart or a reboot. We can go over to channel testing and in order to get the panel to light up, we do have to be connected to power. Right now, we are still connected using USB. So we'll go ahead and disconnect the USB. We'll let the wireless card join the network and then we'll be able to test out the panel and make sure everything's working. So now we are on the 192.168.30.40 IP address, which is the IP address for the Pi. You could also use the host name. You can get to it either way, whatever you prefer. And then we can go down to status control and we wanna make one other adjustment. Click on FPP settings and then click on time. Go ahead and set your time zone and I would recommend enabling NTP. You wanna make sure that your Eagle Bones and FPP players all have the same time and time zone so they can stay in sync with each other. And then after you've done that, the sign should be ready to go. We can go over to display testing and enable and the tune to or whatever matrix you're building should be turning on. And you can cycle between the different effects just to make sure it's lighting up, but should be good to go. And then we can configure it in X lights. So what you're going to do is click on add ethernet and give it a name. Go ahead and change this active dropdown to X lights only. Go ahead and click on vendor and it's going to be FPP. Go ahead and click on the model and go to LED panels. Go ahead and type in the IP address. This should be the same one that you set in the web interface. And then go ahead and click on protocol, click the dropdown and change that to DDP. And then go ahead and set the correct number of channels However many pixels your panel is going to be, you can multiply that by three, or it will show you in the FPP interface. And then once you have that set, go ahead and click on save. In our case, I already did it and it's over here. So I'll go ahead and remove this one. And once it's configured, it should have the correct number of channels. It will light up green showing that it has a connection. And then over here in your layout, go ahead and grab a new matrix. And since I already did this, you can see it over here. We gave it a name. You want the direction to be horizontal. The number of strings represents the vertical strings. In our case, since it's two panels high, it is 32 times two, so 64. And then nodes per string, it is the width, so 64 times two, 128. You want to start your panels in top left, so go ahead and make sure that that's selected. And then you're gonna use start channel, and then you're gonna select the start channel over here and set the controller as the FPP device and then whatever start channel that it is using. And then you can go ahead and say save. And then when you are ready to do a sequence or make any changes, what you're gonna do is come up to this tool section and click on FPP connect. 
FPP Connect will find all of your FPP devices. It will tell you what mode that they're currently in. In most cases, it should probably have one master and then the other should be in remote. If you see any in bridge mode like this, this means that the FPP device is in bridge mode, which will allow you to send output directly from Xlights. You only want to do that if you're testing something, otherwise you want that in remote mode. And then you can add any sequences that you have. Go ahead and you can check these. The sequence files, you want to have the V2 sparse. That way only the data for that particular model will be uploaded to that FPP device. For panels, you want to have UDP turned off. So go ahead and set both of these to none. Your master, you can leave that turned on. You don't need to upload any of the models to the FPP Eagle Bones or matrixes. And then go ahead and click on upload. This will take a minute or two. And then from there, we can open the web interface and make sure all of the information has synced. All right, so now we are in the web interface. We can set this back to remote. And then once this reboots, we can go over to content and down to file manager. And we can see that the sequences were in fact properly uploaded. You can see how much space they're taken up from here. If you want to add any plugins, you can add a few different ones. They have quite a few for testing or doing some unique things. So you can play around with those. But your panel should be configured. It should work in Xlights and your FPP master should be able to talk to it. And from here, you should be good to go. Now that the panel's all put together and configured, you should be able to control it with FPP or in Xlights. The next part is we'll want to put it in a weatherproof enclosure to protect it from the elements. This video is getting a little long, so we're gonna put that in a part two. If you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can see the part two of this video series. And if you have any questions or concerns, leave a comment or send us a message and we'll be happy to help. See you next time.